NumPy. I'm going to develop the function S1 in a test-driven way. So the first test I will write is, uh, for example, S1 that this should work. Expect silent that if I run my code that this will not give an error. Well, this is in the test that library, so loaded library test that and see if my tests uh, fail. Yes, they fail. So now it's time to write that function. Is one is a function that takes value, let's call it x, and it does uh, well, nothing. Let's see if it already, if we already passed the test. Load it, run it. Yes, works. That's great. So now we're going to add a new test that should um, that should break the code. So I think that one is indeed one, so this should return true. This test fails, so that's great. Now we're going to now we can fix it. Well, we can just check if x equals one. Maybe this has fixed the test. Let's see. Enter. Works. Works. Great. We fixed it. Now let's see if we can find something new. So for example, two is not one, but already this thing is working. So like I can also check for zero or minus one. Um, like you can leave, you can leave in those tests because just pure out of documentation purposes. Um, but uh, I'll choose not to. I choose to be very strict here. Um, also, I expect, so you may think I'm done now, but I'm not. For example, if I do an error, I expect an error if I put in the word nonsense, I predict an error. And here I'm going to write the error message. Um, let's say something like x must be a number. So that's a, so the user um, will see a good error message if he, he or she abuses my function. So that means you have to modify the test if uh, is numeric. So if x n is not numeric, then we should add a stop. Stop. And I just copy the error message to be sure it works and not make a typo. So let's see if we now pass all the tests, including a new one. So I load it. Awesome, works. Uh, also, now I like to clean up. That's actually the third phase of test-driven development, breaking it, fixing it, cleaning up. Um, now, I'm, uh, this is more of a design question. So for example, what if I put in multiple numbers? Let's say one and two. Then you can argue, well, we should return, a, uh, in this case, a true and a false. It could also argue, no, the function is called is1. And that's a function that has one purpose, determining if one number is one. Um, and for multiple numbers, it should be called r ones. That's the plural English form of it. So let's stick to the English version. So if I ask you if one and two is one, that would be invalid. Uh, that would be incorrect English. So here I'm going to say that if I use to call is one with two numbers, then I want the error message x must be one number. So let's so this test breaks, did not throw an error. So let's fix let's fix that as well. If x if the length of x is different than one. X must be one number. So let's see if all the tests still work. So now I'm going to decrease the font a slight bit because I already get more complex code. Run it, works, works, still works. Great. So if you want to be very um, ambitious, you could also say that, so there are some variables that are a bit weirder in R. For example, is one null. Uh, so null is a very special one, and I expected this error to be there. So let's see if that works. No, that still works, so we can remove that one. And A also works. Um, inf. 
Um, yeah, well, that should should return a false actually. So this should be false. Expect false because infinite is not. Yeah. So that means that I cannot add extra tests that break my code. So that means that this function is beautiful. Uh, unless someone else detects a bug in it, he or she will send me an email or a GitHub issue. Um, this function is production ready. So here I showed you how to develop the function is one in a test-driven development way. And I wish you a very good day. Bye.